Welcome back to the Happy Homestead. I'm Amanda, and today we are kicking off week three of the Every Bit Counts Challenge. Now I have a little confession to make, because today is Monday, August 16th, technically the second day of the week, but I didn't get to film or put anything up yesterday. You guys know how it is. Life is busy, it is crazy, it ebbs and it flows, and yesterday it ebbed, and there was just too much to do, not enough time in the day. So I'm gonna double up today, because I do want to get some things done. Not because I'm trying to stay necessarily perfect for the challenge or for you, but because I <laughs> have a lot to do this week. I have a lot to do. So I'm going to be kind of getting as much done as I can over these next six days and uh, call it a win. So, all right, yeah, so you can see, I have a ton of peppers and tomatoes. We went to my in-laws this past weekend uh, to hang out on Sunday and it was so relaxing and it was great spending time with family and they gifted us this produce. So my mother and father-in-law have the most amazing garden. Um, you wouldn't think by the size of it, and it's not small by any means, but it's not like this acre field either, right? You wouldn't think by the size of it, they would get as much as they do, but they are doing something right because I've got tomatoes and bell peppers and hot peppers and all kinds of cherry tomatoes and big tomatoes and slicing tomatoes and zebra tomatoes and everything in between. So I've got a lot to get done and it's exciting. I'm so grateful that they gifted it to us because they know we would put it to good use. But today, right now, I have a gallon of this gorgeous raw milk from pastured cows that we buy locally from a very wonderful family. And I'm gonna make ricotta today, ricotta as they might say it. I'm making ricotta, and this is from the Home Cheese Making Book by Ricky Carroll. This book is my cheese Bible. I've been making our own cheese now for a little over a year, and it is so satisfying. It is exciting. It's extremely interesting. I'm learning so much about how cheese and cultures and everything work together. But today, ricotta, it's a pretty easy cheese. I'm going to put it in my pot with some salt, some citric acid, heat it up. The curds will form. I'm gonna scoop the curds out into a little mold here, let them drain, and then it will go in the fridge later today. Um, the goal of this is that later this week, hopefully this weekend, I'm going to be making some homemade pasta and ravioli, and this ricotta will go in the ravioli. So this is not a how-to video. So just kind of keep in mind as I'm rolling through this because I just wanna make sure that you can kind of see the process without me actually teaching the process today. I'm considering doing some cheese videos and course type thing later, uh, just not there today. This is a whole milk ricotta. So I shake it so that way some of the cream that's sticking to the side here really gets integrated in because I want all that gorgeous cream for a delicious ricotta cheese. So with this recipe, I'm adding in some citric acid that is dissolved in water, as well as some Redmond real salt that is dissolved in water. I'm gonna do a quick stir. And start heating up. So that's gonna get heated to anywhere between 185 and 195. Uh, and then I'll start to see some of those curds form. But while that's going, the other thing I want to do today is make and freeze some stuffed peppers. So I already set aside a good amount of the bell peppers that I think would be great for stuffing. Um, I had wanted to do this anyway. I had this on my list for this year for the preserving, right? Just to have some good meals in the freezer. 
and I was just gonna buy peppers. I mean, I literally had some peppers in my cart for Costco last week and I just didn't do it. But look at these. I mean, these are perfect. I'm, again, so thankful. Um, we'll put these to good use, but yeah, so I'm gonna stuff these. And normally when I had made stuffed peppers and when my mom had made them when I was little, we'd cut them in half like this and then spread it open and kind of lays on its side. This year, I think I'm going, especially with these peppers, I'm gonna cut them this way. So they actually sit in the pan like this and they have a top. Um, only because some of these peppers are smaller, but they're perfect stuffing size, right? If I just change the, the angle in which I'm stuffing. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I've already got my beef thawing in the fridge. I'm just gonna get some rice on the stove at some point mix everything up, stuff these puppies away, and then put them in the freezer. So I've got my rice cooking on the stove. Um, you'll see me put some of the pepper mixture together and then stuff the peppers. I will show you as the ricotta comes together right as we get up to temperature. I'm kind of narrating this now because this is going to be happening over a long span of time today. It's just not all at once. I've got to do this kind of in between things and my other obligations. So uh, today is really about making the ricotta, making and freezing the stuffed peppers, and then tonight you're gonna see me chop some of the bigger tomatoes that are already ripe and ready, and a lot of these cherry tomatoes, and I'm gonna get them in my roaster. At least I think I'm gonna do this. I wanna make sure I have enough tomatoes to do it. But uh, And then I'm gonna roast it overnight, mill it through the food mill tomorrow to get all the seeds and the skins out, and then we're gonna can up some tomato sauce tomorrow. So today is really about ricotta, stuffed peppers, and getting the tomatoes ready tonight for tomorrow. We're getting up to the right temperature because you can kind of see the curds forming. I want to be very careful not to break the curds. Oh, they're glorious. Beautiful. You kind of see like a translucent yellow way. Do you see that? So I believe we're at the right temperature. I'm going to let this sit. Yeah, 190, 191. Perfect. I'm going to let it sit undisturbed for about 10 minutes and then I will ladle. So I just finished draining the ricotta and I just put it in a container here to go in the fridge. I tasted a little piece. So good. It smells, it's like, it's not sweet, right? But it, it smells kind of sweet. Um, but it's just the milk, salt, and citric acid per the recipe. I have only ever made ricotta from way before, leftover from cheese making. This is nothing like that. <laughs> This is so much better. So into the fridge this goes and I'll pull it out in a couple of days when I decide to make our ravioli. Okay, all I threw in here was some oregano, dried oregano, basil, some leftover tomato paste, leftover pizza sauce, onions, garlic, some leftover mushrooms in the fridge, a little bit of smoked paprika, salt, pepper, I think that's it. Chili is, by the way, what we're having for dinner tonight, but chili and stuffed peppers are one of those things that you can like just kind of clean out your refrigerator from odds and ends. And it's a great way to use things. 
not let anything go to waste, make the most of your money. Peppers are done. Ended up with 12. Two fairly big ones and mostly medium, couple of small. Be perfect for our family dinners. I imagine with 12 peppers, we'll probably get two meals out of this this winter. So I am going to put this in the freezer and then again, once everything is really frozen, I'm gonna wait probably a good 36 to 48 hours. Then I'll put them in a Ziploc bag very carefully so that nothing kind of falls apart and breaks. And then when I'm ready to cook, I'll put them back in a glass casserole dish and it'll probably be on 350 to 375 and it'll probably take about an hour uh, minimum, maybe an hour and 10, 15 minutes max, just making sure that everything is cooked fully through. One more thing I think I'm gonna do really quickly while I have the chance is I have a handful of red bell peppers left. Right, I've got the stuffed peppers done. I've got one or two yellow and mostly smaller green ones that I'm probably just gonna chop up and then freeze like vacuum seal. So we'll have some chopped peppers for this winter. But I saved some of these really pretty sweet red bell peppers because I think these will make really good roasted red peppers to use this winter, right? Maybe we make like a roasted red pepper hummus, add some to salads, casseroles. I love roasted red peppers. Um, and it's one of those things that can be pretty pricey to purchase, but it's so simple to make at home. You will find a variety of recipes online, mostly telling you to just throw them on a sheet pan in the oven and roast at a really high heat. And that is what I'm gonna do. But I am simplifying the process for me just a little bit by cutting them in half, taking out the seeds and the membrane and the stem. Now, when you roast them and then you let them cool, the stem and the seeds and the membrane, they usually come out pretty easy um, but honestly, I'm just doing the work up front because then when they're roasted, I can easily pull the skin off and then let them cool and that's it. I kind of I like the idea of doing the work a little up front first to make it easier once they're roasted. I'm going to try and get as much surface area exposed to the heat as you can. Okay, look how perfect those look. So they've been in about 15 minutes under the broiler. And I am just going to put this on. And what it does is, like I said, traps that heat condensation, allows the skin to come right off. of roasted red peppers go in the freezer. They're about a quarter pound each. I tried to make it as even as I could, um, but I'm excited. So I have all of the fresh tomatoes in, yeah, that I can get in right now. Um, a lot of the big ones that I just cut up, I cut out the cores, cut out any of the bruising and threw them in. And then you saw me put all of the cherry tomatoes in as is. My roaster is about half full. 
and I'm figuring if I'm gonna go to this trouble and get my food mill out tomorrow and really go through this to make some really good sauce that can then either be sauce or soup, I'm gonna throw some of my frozen tomatoes in too. I realize it's gonna take longer for everything to cook down, but it's gonna go all night. So probably gonna get at least two bags out of our freezer into the roaster. Before I sign off for the day, I just want to show you how these are, ooh, there's some steam. These are breaking down. They're all really soft. We got a lot of liquid in there. I'm going to stir these up and just let them go all night and we'll reconvene in the morning. Good morning. It is day three of the third week and the tomatoes have been sitting out overnight. However, my roaster broke and this happened last year. The same exact thing happened last year. My husband rewired it. Apparently it broke again. So at some point last night, it was before I went to bed, so it didn't even last very long. Um, it just started going cold, right? It turns on, but there's no heat being generated. It is certainly a faulty wire somewhere. However, all the tomatoes are thawed. So certainly some are more, you know, broken down than others but they are fine enough to put through the food mill to get our sauce going this is the food mill that i'll be using this is my third year using this it is called the reber food mill it's actually from italy it has a huge hopper here with a pretty big opening i think it's about a two inch opening for some really big tomatoes you can actually do applesauce with it as well under here it has um, where all of the the juice comes out and it sieves out the skins and the seeds come out here on this side and I love it this is the best machine to do a lot of tomatoes at once granted I'm only using it a couple of times a year but it is a workhorse um, I'll link it down below but again this is from Italy and it is the best one I have found that I love so I'm just going to start loading everything in, right? So I've got a casserole dish over here to catch the skin, the seeds, and the pulp. And then on the other side over here, this is the chute where all of the sauce comes down with into the big pot. Did you see how easy that was? That whole batch of um, tomatoes, and I don't even know how many it was. I didn't weigh it or anything, but it took maybe six minutes within the food mill. This thing is amazing. And I'd like to think that I have, right, if you're like thinking on a scale of how many tomatoes people are processing a year, I'm not on the low end, I'm not on the high end, I'm somewhere in the middle, right? There are people that process way more than me. This thing is a workhorse. I love it. It was the best investment. It was a little bit of an investment. This was pre-COVID though, so I don't know how it's changed, but I'm going to highly recommend this food mill and I have no affiliation with them. Okay, but we're not done yet. So our pot, by the way, huge pot, half full. We're gonna get it a little bit more full. All of this pulp here, we're gonna rerun at least two more times. 
there is a lot of moisture in here and you'll be surprised how much is going to come out right when you saw what was just come out it's a lot of the water it's a lot of the water from the tomatoes and that's okay we're going to boil most of it off but we're going to get some really good pulp from here That's it. So all of these pieces are dishwasher safe. I'm going to disassemble, get it in the dishwasher and get this pot on the stove. It's been on the stove now for about an hour. Um, and I have it on high. My burner is as high as it can go. So it's boiling it's a pretty good boil um but because the pot is so big it did take a while to get here uh, but i can see it has reduced by about an inch maybe an inch and a half and you can kind of see the line there on the side of the pot and that's how you know um it's still pretty runny though i don't know how thick i'm going to be able to get it today um, but I'm probably going to let it boil for at least another 30 to 45 minutes and see how it goes. And so while that's going, I wanted to show you. So here is the remainder of that pulp, right? We processed it with the tomatoes, the whole batch, and then I processed the pulp two extra times. It's fairly dry right now. So you have a couple of options. This would be great for chickens. If you had some chickens to feed them this, it's good for the compost pile, or you could dehydrate it, just like I had done my tomato skins, I think it was last week. Um, the difference is that there are a lot of seeds in this pulp today. So if you can see, I mean, it's just a lot of seeds, thousands of seeds probably. Uh, again, not a big deal for your compost, not a big deal for chickens. I don't know that I want to dehydrate this, um, I could and then just grind the seeds up with the skins, but I am actually just going to throw this in the compost today. So when you're processing your tomatoes, kind of think about that, right? Do you want the skins to then dehydrate and form into a powder to use later or not? Um, so whenever I use my big food mill, mostly those are all just going to get composted. It's only when I'm able to pull the skins off from those thawed tomatoes that I will then dehydrate. And while they were perfectly thawed this morning and I could have done that, it's all about time efficiency <laughs> on some level. So when I'm ready, hopefully in about an hour, hour and a half, I'm going to start canning my tomato sauce. Now I am leaving this just as sauce. Um, and so when I first started canning, this was always a little bit confusing to me because I always thought tomato sauce was like marinara, right? Pasta sauce, like herbs and thick and full of body. Um, but no, <laughs> tomato sauce is literally tomato sauce, nothing else. So kind of think about you know the words that I'm using and what I'm talking about. I, I say that because it is confusing, at least it was for me. So there's like pizza sauce, right? That's a little bit thicker, but it has certain kind of herbs and flavors within it. Then there's like a pasta sauce or a marinara, again, a little bit thicker, a little more body. Think about what you would get in the store. And then there's just tomato sauce, which is just tomatoes. And so I am canning just tomato sauce. I will put a little salt in each one of my jars, but I'm not putting any herbs in. I'm not adding anything to it. And the reason is because then these jars of tomato sauce become that much more versatile in the winter and next year when I need to use them. I can turn them in to so many different things. Whereas if I can this as a particular type of sauce, I mean, it's still useful, it's still great, but it limits me um, as far as how many uses I have for it. When you're canning tomato sauce, um, you can do pints, you can do quarts. Like I said, I'm doing quarts. My canner can only hold seven quarts at a time. So 
I'm just gonna do seven quarts on the first batch today. So when you're canning tomatoes, there's two things you need to be aware of. Number one, you can water bath can it, or you can pressure can it. And number two, you need to add an acid, either citric acid or lemon juice per jar. And the reason is because you cannot be guaranteed the level of acidity in your tomatoes, whether they're homegrown or store-bought, it doesn't matter. You don't really know the acidity. So by adding citric acid or lemon juice, you're helping to ensure a safely canned product at home. Now, per quart, I would either add two tablespoons of lemon juice or half a teaspoon of citric acid. And I'm gonna go ahead and do citric acid today because this is a lot more valuable to me in other, op other uses here in the kitchen. So I will add salt, as well as citric acid to each jar, then pour my tomato sauce in, lids, rings, get it in the canner. And these will only process, you do pints or quarts for pressure canning, which is what I'm gonna be doing, for 15 minutes. Now, if you're going to water bath can your tomato sauce, it's 40 minutes. So you can kind of see the difference there, right? But if you're not at the level of pressure canning yet, Water bath canning is perfectly fine. Just make sure you have at least an inch of boiling water covering the top of your jar. So you really need to have those jars submerged and then they, um, the timer doesn't start until that water is at a rolling boil and you boil for 40 minutes. Pressure canning 15, that's what I'm gonna go with. It's just a lot easier and cleaner for me. So because this is going to be tomato sauce and it is a little bit more runny than your traditional marinara or pasta sauce, I don't actually use this for pasta sauce. Um, if we want that really big, bold, hearty marinara, I actually buy it by the case at Azure Standard. And you can link below where you can check out Azure Standard and place your order and they are a bulk buying food service company that, well, more than just food, but a bulk buying company of all healthy and organic and natural living products that are then delivered to a drop site near you. We've been doing Azure for over a year now, and it has been a lifesaver in a variety of ways of opting out of the traditional grocery store. Um, so I will use this for chilies, soups, stews, um, those types of things. Things that were, it's not like a pasta sauce where I need a really big, bold marinara. I will use jars that I purchased from Azure Standard that are organic, all natural, no sugar, and delicious. So as you can see, there is still a decent amount left. I probably have at least another five to six quarts. The jars are done. They're still in the canner. I'm gonna take them out in just a minute, but it looks like everything processed and nothing broke, so all is good. And like I had hoped, I've decided what I'm gonna do with the remainder of my sauce. It's actually, I transferred it. It went from a 30 quart pot to now an eight quart pot. So I probably have between five and six quarts of sauce left. 
I just put it on the stove on medium heat. I think I'm gonna try to reduce that down for the next couple of hours. And then tomorrow I'll deal with it. So tomorrow I'm gonna use it and make this roasted tomato soup. Now this is on page 287 of the all new ball book of canning. Thank you for joining me on the journey today for the first three days of the third week of the Every Bit Counts Challenge. I really appreciate all of the comments, all of the, the likes, the, the emails I get, or the messages I get on Instagram. I love it. I mean, this is just such a wonderful creative outlet for me and I love inspiring other people. I love being inspired by you. I'm always inspired by other comments that I get from others. So thank you. And uh, I will see you on the next video. Stay healthy, stay well. Bye-bye.